Hello FreeCAD folks. So this is the tutorial video to show you how to use the uh, self-tapping holes. So Made With Layers YouTube channel showed this technique, uh, but he only demonstrated it in Fusion. I want to show you how to do this in FreeCAD. And hopefully we can get the devs to add this to the uh, hole function. It'd be nice to have a self-tapping option in there that does this. So uh, what we're doing here, this is a hole and inside of it you can see we have these bumps sticking out. So this hole is the diameter of the threads of the screw. So if you want to screw this in with just the hole, it wouldn't bite into anything because it's the same diameter as the out outer part of the threads. These bumps become the engagement area for the threads. And what that does is it preserves the perimeter walls of your hole here, which engage with your infill. So your screw has a good solid thing to bite into with these bumps and yet it doesn't damage the perimeter walls and you end up with a much stronger um, self-threading hole for your screws. It, believe me, it's a lot stronger. Uh, it, the screw bites in really well and there's a lot more strength there than if it, dis if it destroyed these perimeter walls. So I have made a file with uh, sketches to help automate this process somewhat. It's still manual, but it makes it easier. And I'm going to show you how that works. To make it easier to work with in FreeCAD, I have created this self-tapping screw sketches file. This is available on GitHub and the link is in the description below. You can download this file and then open it as you need it. It contains three sketches presently for the M3 size, the M4 size, and the M5 size screws, but those can be changed to your specific needs. Let's open the M4 sketch to have a look at it. This is the basic geometry of our hole, and the uh, outer radius of these arcs is the same as your threaded part of your screw. And that is the one constraint in here that you can define. You see it's red. These are orange. That's because they are computed based on this. So this radius would be the radius of your threaded part of your screw. In this case, we're looking at an M4 screw. And if I double click that, you'll see it is two millimeters, which is the radius, half the diameter of your M4 screw. So if you had a screw that had an odd screw size, or maybe you had a US screw, and you wanted to make the hole uh, for the screw size you have, you would just change this to the radius of the threaded part of your screw. So if you measure your threaded screw in metric and it comes out to uh, 4.6 millimeters, you would just put in half of that or 4.6 divided by two. And when I hit okay, the geometry recomputes for the entire thing. You can see this radius updated and these updated. So you could make custom sizes as you need, but in our case, we're just going to be using the defaults for this example. So how would you use this in real life? Well, let's take a sample box. This is a simple utility box design I just threw together for this demonstration. And let's say we wanted to add M3 screw holes to these pads. What I would do first is I would open the uh, self-tapping screw sketches. That opens in a separate file here, separate tab. We'll leave that alone for now and we'll go back to our box. Now what I would do is I would duplicate or import one of the sketches. So I'm going to put M3s here. So over in the tree I'll expand the self-tap screw sketches. I'll select the M3 sketch and we're, we're on our sample box tab down here that's important this is where we're going to duplicate it to so with this selected i'll come up to the edit menu and select duplicate object and what you can see what it did is it put a copy of the sketch here in our project it is sitting down on the xy plane and you can see it there at the bottom of the box we need to attach it to the surface that we're going to put it on so i'm going to select the sketch and down here in its data tab under attachment, you can see map mode says flat face. I'm going to click that and then click the little three dot menu in here to select where I want to attach it. 
that brings up the attachment box. It says selecting, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the face I want to attach it to. And then that face populated here and you can see the sketch moved up. It's attached to this face now. So I'll hit OK. Now all we need to do is move it into position. So I'm going to open the sketch by double clicking it. And here it is in the middle of our box. We want it on this pad. So I'm just going to grab it with the mouse and drag it up here to where I want it. And then I can zoom in and, and lock it down. This geometry is all locked together. But if I grab the center point here, you can see I move it around. So I want to center it on this pad. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick the Create External Geometry link. And I'm going to select this corner point and this corner point of that pad. Right click to cancel the tool. Then I'll select those two points that I just added in and the center point of the sketch and hit Symmetry. And now it is centered on that pad. Now we want to put one of these on each of these pads, so we need to make a copy of this for each of these corners. The easy way to do that is I'm going to drag a box over that to select the geometry. Now it's all selected. And to make a copy of it, I could Control C and Control V, but that's going to paste it right over the top of itself, which makes it really hard to select the copy. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mirror geometry here, select that, and I'm going to pick this center line. And when I click, it makes a copy of it over here. Now I'll do the same thing. I'll select it again. I'll hit the mirror geometry or symmetry. I'll pick this line and it puts a copy of it there. Then I'll select this one and I'll do it again and select this line and that puts a copy of it there. Now all I've got to do is go down in here and lock these down. They're actually in the right place now, but it's probably best practice to, to, to constrain them because they can still be moved around. Let's see. So again, I would just select this corner and that corner with the Create External Geometry link. Pick those points and the center point and select a symmetry constraint to lock that in place. So you would do that for all four of these. And then once you've got them in place, I can close the sketch. You can see our sketches are now where we want them to be. And I will pocket it to the depth I want my holes. We'll just leave it at five millimeters for now. And there we go. We have our self-tapping holes. Now there's one thing that's missing. We want to taper on the top here. We want these bumps to taper out just a little bit over the first millimeter to guide the screw threads in. So to do that, I'm going to select this surface and I'm going to make a new sketch. And on each of these uh, screw holes, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create external geometry and select this arc. That gives us a center point and it gives us these um, arc points on the diameter of our screw hole. So I'll come up here and I'll just select the centered hole or centered circle. Constrain it to the center point. You see this the constraint appears there, the little cross, coincident. I'll click and I'll drag out until it locks onto these points. And I'll click again. And I've now created a uh, circle on that uh, object. I'll do the same for each of these. Select the arc to get the center. Select the centered circle. Lock it to that center point. Drag it out until it locks to those. And I'll do the same on each of these. Then I'll close this sketch. You can see the green outline of our sketch there on each of those holes. And what I want to do is I want to do a one millimeter pocket. Set the dimension to one millimeter. And that, that you can see it pocketed down there, but we want this to taper. So I'm going to come down here to the taper angle. And I'm going to set that to negative 30 degrees. And there we go. We've now tapered those in. OK. And there we go. We have our self-tapping screw holes on our model ready for 3D printing. So that's how easy it is to use these. I'm hoping that I'm going to present this idea to the devs of FreeCAD 
and see if they will add this self-tapping functionality to the whole command so we can have an automated way of doing this. It'd be really nice. But anyway, um, I hope you find that useful. And that's how you can use my sketches to add these, these new, much stronger self-tapping holes to your models. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.